What I like about filmmaking is the post production. Like after we're done filming, I like editing and stuff like that. I started like editing in 10th grade. That's my favorite part about the filmmaking. That's what draws the um, audience attention towards the film. And it kind of like changes it up and makes it look better. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm tired. Me too. I know. But you're used to this. I'm not. <laughs> Alright. I have 30 years of practice. Now I'm off three hours of sleep right now. <laughs> I got it. I'm just lost. Alright. All these different things I'm trying to juggle around. My first month of work, I had work, film, shooting a TV show on Mondays. Had to work 40 days a week. I had basketball on Thursday and Friday. I had school basketball. And it was everything. It was crazy. But I'm now now I'm starting to like manage it good and manage my time on certain days and getting stuff like in order now. Okay. I do see myself doing filmmaking after I graduate, but I would like to minor in film since I already have experience in the class and I would like to major in management. I have no friends. I work every day. No, okay, I have friends, but I lost some friends because I don't have time for them because I, re I wouldn't rather have money over friends. But I won't let nothing stop from me getting my money. I will play games, but I will also get my money. Even though I am a student and have been a student for several years now, I don't really see student as my true identity. I have always been the type of person that keeps busy. Some people, I've heard them say, especially at undergrad, is that you can't have a life. You can choose to have a social life or be a good student. You can't have both. And I feel that I successfully found ways to do both, but that may have been at the expense of sleep. Lots of people tend to ask me when I find time to sleep, and the short answer for that is that I don't. Maybe it's because of all the coffee I drink. If I am not at work or at school, you can typically find me in a coffee shop. I never truly have been able to experience a life of being only a student. I have always had at least one job while being a student. Two years of being a student at the University of Pennsylvania, I was teaching full-time and also attending the school with other jobs speckled in as well, which I think is quite the accomplishment. I think that I would like to know that experience of being just a student, to know if I would be able to carry on that life and to see how my grades would look. I still think that I've been somewhat successful, or mostly successful, leading up to this point where I am on the cusp of graduation. I'm a busy, busy girl. I would describe myself as a student, someone who cares deeply about others, not just about myself. Um, and I just like to have fun and laugh all the time. I've been one to like school since I started school. Like I was always about my schoolwork, about my grades, getting things in on time. It's never been, I've never been the type to slack off or anything. I've always had a passion for school because I understand that you need years and years of school to, to at least be able to do what I want. And I like to be able to learn new things rather than not knowing anything at all. At first I thought it was going to be kind of challenging, but I am actually taking balancing school and we're very good. Like my grades have been good. My GPA is still good and I've been able to continue to make it to work on time and focus on that. I've learned that you think you can't balance two identities at once, but it's it's actually if you know who you are deep down, you can do both. You can do more than two things even if you're able to, if you feel like you're able to balance it. I feel like I can balance both things. I am 
am a first year PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania, UPenn. I study race socialization with the Racial Empowerment Collaborative and Howard Stevenson. Um, when I think about being a student, I think about a lot of different things because my life is much more complicated than just being a student. Um, I think about being a, a soon-to-be mom. Um, I'm a partner and I like to think of myself as a great partner to James. I do a lot of other things that keep me happy like painting, drawing, um, I like to color. <laughs> I'm also an emerging filmmaker, which is exciting. Film takes a lot of time. Um, and I also like to spend time with my family, even from afar. So if that's, you know, a Skype session or a phone call, I do my best. Um, but it's really difficult balancing multiple identities uh, because, like, I think, I think about the fact that, you know, something has to give along the way. You're not going to be the best student, the best partner, the best mom, the best sister, the best daughter in the world. Um, but again, I do everything that I can to make that balance possible. Um, and ultimately, I, I've learned how to prioritize. I put my family, my partner, and myself first. Um, because I believe that if you're not grounded in who you are and you're not taking care of yourself, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. I am in the CTE program, and the CTE program I'm in is film and video, and we do we basically do short films and learn how the how the movie making process goes. I've always stick to like certain like always into like like media or TV or like internet because I always that was always something that clicked to me like in sports those things always used to click to me and I. I, I don't I don't like things when they don't really click. Like when I don't get it, it, it frustrates me. And I, I, that's why I enjoyed film so much. Cause, cause once I got into it, it, it was all easy. And then I, even when I was getting frustrated with it, I still wanted to keep on doing it because I like doing it so much. So that's what makes me that that's how I know I want to stay doing it. Cause really, even if I get frustrated at the end of the day, I still want to keep on making film. I was one out of 28 kids that got selected for like hard work and for like in the CTE program. Like I was one of the top students there, and they selected me. So uh, they took us like to the mayor's office downtown, and you got to bring your family members. So I brought my mom. I'm really big on like my family, and because I just always grew up like with them around me. Because I was always shy, so I didn't grow up having. Not to sound sad, but I didn't have that many like friends or anything like that. I didn't get out of my shell till like late middle school. So it was always like my cousins and my brother, and my sister and my mom that I would always like talk to, and they were like the people I always hung out with uh, growing up. So that's why I'm just so big on my family, cause I mean they're so they're just important to my life and everything I do. I went to art school, so I have a degree in art education, and I'm an artist. Sometimes I draw, sometimes I paint. Um, I make a lot of like weird video things. Um, I just like to make things, and that's what I want to focus on. I'm actually about to take a leave of absence. I've just been like going and going and doing the student thing for such a long time that I just want to take a little bit of a breather <laughs> um, and focus on my artwork and stuff. I'll still feel like a student. I think it's such a part of my identity and it always has been and it probably always will be that I'm just a learner and I love to learn and I love to teach myself things. So I don't think, I don't think that not being in school will make me not a student anymore. Being a student, people tend to see that as like 
the first and foremost thing about you. Um, when in reality, my life revolves around a lot of different axes. Um, you know, I have a lot of friends and I like to make things and work on my artwork and I love to read about all different kinds of things and, you know, I love my mom and my family and I like to spend time with them. The thing that I've heard the most often is things along the lines of, oh, well, since you're still a student, you don't have to worry about the real world yet. When in reality, like, I have plenty of real world problems and I think there are a lot of students who do have real world problems. I get on the 57 bus to Fern Rock Transportation Center. Godfrey Avenue, for Route K. I get on the subway for about 20 minutes. Then I get off at Cecil B. Moore or Susquehanna and walk about 10 minutes or 15 minutes to school. I catch one bus and one train, 27. and um, the Broad Street Line.
usually I go regional rail sometimes, um, catch the H to Sedgwick and then catch regional rail to Temple and walk from Temple. I take two buses in the morning. One is 58 from my home, then Route 3. I'm Daisha Bagley. My name is Christian Ransom. My name is Carlito Miller. I'm Ashlyn Churian. I mean, actually, I'm Ashlyn Bengalau Putinveri Churian. It's a long name. And I'm here in Carver High School. Carver Engineering and Science. George Washington Carver Engineering and Science. Y'all already know that, though. I'm from India and I came from India in 2016, April. It's been eight or nine months now. And after coming from there, I feel a lot of changes here and the school is so different. Everything seems, it's a different world. And it was really, really surprising for me being here. The commute made me, they took me, the fear out of me to travel in America. So when I came here, I was really like afraid to travel outside because I don't know the places, I don't know the people, how they would be. So after coming to the school, I know how to go in the train, how to travel by the bus, and I know how to read the signboards and how to find a place. I think Either way, whichever neighborhood I was in, I would still end up going here. I think I, my parents really did set me off on the right path and with goals in mind. They were thinking they didn't want me to have the same life as a lot of friends I knew. A lot of, well, yeah, definitely friends I knew. I've seen a lot of people who had successful careers and they could have been ball players, doctors, lawyers. They, they had talent. And I've seen a lot of that get thrown away just because of what they were predisposed to growing up, no fault of their own. And everybody, everybody says always a choice, you can do whatever you want to do, but for some, that's not true for everybody. Not everybody has that, that choice. My neighborhood school was not a good school. At least anyway, I had to travel a little bit far from my home. So I thought, I know I'm traveling, so why can't I travel more and come to a better school? He met the dog. He met the dog, yes, that's what's up. All right, see you, my love. Uh, sometimes I'll go sub, but it's sometimes it's like, you know, I don't feel like dealing with a whole bunch of nonsense with people. And especially my mom doesn't like it for me because she knows how I get sometimes. So just avoid any confrontation with anybody. Usually I go regional rail. I thought this was a necessary step to reach my goals and go into college. And this was definitely a school that could help me reach those goals. This school is special because your teachers genuinely care about your education. The teachers, a lot of them actually do care. The person who's teaching you has more time to actually work with you on the side on concepts you don't understand. We didn't have an African American history. We didn't, a lot of kids didn't know their own identity. And coming here, our African American teacher, Mr. Milton, he's amazing. He always will set you off on the right path. He will never tell you the wrong information, only facts. And that really did give you an identity of who you are, because you can't, 
you can't begin to form an opinion about anybody else if you don't first know that you're content with yourself and who you're, what your actual identity is. School shows me, I mean, they have a trust in me. I know that, but normally schools refuse that. They don't know how a student from a different country behaves, how she studies, even though grades show up, they don't know everything, but the teachers here really trust me a lot. It's a comfortable environment. You could walk up to anyone and have, feel free to have a conversation. Even though people do share their differences, everybody's definitely closer. The community is stronger, so it's less of a, I gotta get one up on him. Coming from middle school and going coming here, definitely I could see a switch and how there was no more hand-holding, there wasn't, you know, you have this assignment due, it's, they give it to you, it's up to you if you're going to complete it or not, and if you don't, it's on you. I'm pretty sure in college, I'll be able to balance between my social life and my schoolwork based off my experience here. People don't associate Carver with the neighborhood that it's in, like, we're still a good school, we still have great students, and I don't think our neighborhood affects the students that we acquire either because our students travel from the whole entire city. Success to me, of course, financial stability is a big part of it. Having financial freedom, of course, that's a big part of it. But having ethics and morals is also part of it. If you're not balanced in that area, it will really start to show. If I do something really nice and with a lot of effort and everything, if I get the result that I'm expecting, then I'm happy, I'm successful. It's different terms of success you know, that you could use, but I just want to have a nice life and to give my children hopefully things that I didn't have, you know, being better off than where I am. I don't mind what the salary would be, but getting a, I mean, highly, uh, getting a job that is good and that has a good reputation. I think success is basically just doing what you want to do. Um, I don't think it has any set limitation on it. like. I don't think it's making a certain amount of money or doing anything specific, but I feel as though you define your own success. So um, you set a goal in your mind, and when you reach that goal, it's success. I hear older people say it takes a village to raise a child. That's one of my favorite things about Bartram, is that I've never seen a school have such a tight-knit community wrapped around it. I think people just look at it from the outside and what happens. Come inside the school and see what it's really like in here. Yes, I'm ready. Is that ready? 
This is me acting. I'm not a good actor. This is me acting for the camera. My name is Rich. And now Sade is cinematographer and Honesty is director. Alexis is filming the film. Seven's on sound. I'm filming us filming the film and Alexis filming the film of the film. Uh, do I just keep talking? Okay. Can you count so we can uh, check this out? One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. One last thing I promise that when we are doing a real interview, it's really important that we're all not drawing attention away from, like, the person, you know, or doing anything to draw attention away. Um, one thing that will help with that is having the production team set up before the person gets in there so they're not, like, watching all these things happen. And they said they feel comfortable where it was. Mm -hmm. exactly. Seven, help the Miles set it up since you're. Hold the boom pole for me. Can you, can you scoot to right, please? Hold on. As I said, our team's going to make a film about an issue we care about. And do you have any ideas for what you want to make a film about? And what are your ideas? I really do think Bartram has grown over the years. I like I like the school. It's not, it's not. I don't think it's bad at all. It's actually pretty funny sometimes. Seven. Hello. <laughs> Do you have anything you want to add after doing that for your first time? I thought I was like pee my pants. You know, you know. <laughs> it's so, you just, so like, it's okay if I'm doing this on purpose to get this effect. Sometimes people do that. But like, take note that you can't see. One thing I just want to ask This one right here, here is opening is Sean, and the one behind you. I had to go with all my eyes, so. Come on, come on, we're going to do that. Hey, Elijah, what is your name? <laughs> you said my name already. AKA Biggie. Breathe hot. Breathe hot. Breathe hot. Are you supposed to finish it? I, I care about the teachers because the teachers care. They, they give the compassion like back to us. You know what I mean? Like teachers, they show the love and stuff. So I love the teachers and caring about the teachers in here. I'm just popping back up there. This is Mr. Lovey Lovey of the community. This is the heart of the community right here. As you can see. I think we should make a film about how our school is not how it's made out to be. Like our school is made out to be like one of, is one of the worst schools in Southwest Philadelphia, which is not. There's a lot of good things that goes on in Bartram. It's ours. Yeah, we can record that. You can go to YouTube right now, you search up Bartram. You probably won't even get no good things. You'll probably just see a bunch of fights. That's all you'll see. Scrolling down, I've seen it for myself. You, you search up Bertram on YouTube, it's just a bunch of fights. Like, but what they're not doing, I feel as though, they're not putting the good stuff on the internet, the stuff that needs to be on the internet. They look at that one incident instead of looking at everything else. That's like going wrong in the school, be like, oh, these kids, it's just out of control. And they really not. It's just, you know, like just everybody had that one kid that, that messes up and like, you know, X like X bad is in every school. Right. Everybody makes mistakes. Right. I don't just feel as though this school it's not it's not horrible, but if people would stop like doing dumb is it okay to curse? Yes. Stop doing dumbass things, maybe <laughs> but is it just people doing dumbass things, or is it people doing like, or is it the the what are the systemic things? And from all of your interviews, you listen to them, right? And the theme that most people were interested in one was Bartram's not as bad as it th people think, gets a bad rap. The other one was, well, there are some issues, but they're not necessarily issues that people here cause. They're not right. They're like more systemic things. So one thing that we wanted to focus on today are like, well, what are those things that are affecting Bartram and making some of these challenges that then people at Bartram kind of get the bad rap for, right? So there's this odd kind of thing. Alright, find the good shots.
United States of America thing. I want so that. I no, I didn't. Alright, Mr. Lafferty, from Q, count to five for me, please. Five. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Count to five. Backwards or forwards? It doesn't matter. One, two, three. Thank Seems like sometimes Bartram gets a bad reputation. Why do you think that is? Bartram gets a bad reputation because of things that happened in the past. Um, when I first joined, and Bartram always, even when I came to Bartram, I got looks from people that know nothing about Bartram. Uh, you get this look like, and it's like, wait, you, you don't know anything about Bartram. You've never been to Southwest Philadelphia. You don't understand uh, some of the, the challenges at Bartram. We're going to get one of them little things going like, action. We have one. Oh, you do? You want it? Boom. Action. <laughs> so cool. Film groom interview. Blooper. You all right? Mm-hmm. My name is Demario Messi, part of the UPenn Film Group. Recently, we had did some research on Bartram, and from like years, probably like 2000 maybe until now, yeah, Bartram has always got a bad reputation. Do you know why Bartram has a bad reputation? Well, yes, um, in all honesty, because that's the way the news media points. Bartram is on the news often because they want to sensationalize the negative. What you see in the media is unfortunate, but I think it's just that. I think it's uh, a lot of smoke and mirrors. Are there bad things that happen here? Sure. But there's a lot of great things that happen here as well. And I don't think that that's, you know, a Bartram High School thing. I think that's an urban community thing, that we see one picture painted. You know, we don't get to see the rest. For people who may only know about the bad parts of Bart Bartram's reputation, what would you like them to see, know, or understand about Bartram? Um, I just think they need to, first I would love for them to come in. Um, just come in and see it for yourself, because perception isn't reality. And what they need to understand is that the school has had a lot of different people in here. I think, what, four or five principals in the last, the last three years? Um, I fell in love with Bartram first when they won the city championship back in 1976. So that's probably about 41 years now, I guess. Um, so I'm a Bartram lifer, so to speak. Do you think that if, if people could see the way that kids walk in these hallways, and put it in our shoes, you think they would feel the way that we feel like when they say that Bartram is a bad school? I want them to come in and see for themselves. You know, we still have some areas to improve in, um, but I definitely want those students and their parents to start coming to our building and see the great work we're doing right now at the new John Bartram High School. Brings with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoice in rise high as the listening skies. Let every sound loud as the roll of Please come in and have a seat. Thank you for coming out tonight for our first day tonight. Give yourself a round of applause for that. Thank you. Hopefully moving forward, we have several other events planned. We've turned the climate around. We've done some different things. We're still a work in progress. Because as you know, over the past several years, my alma mater, which I love, went through some challenges. But now, we're coming out of those challenges. So clap it up for that. That's big. That's amazing. Okay? John Bartram High School was one of 20 schools selected to compete in the Aspen Challenge. And I am working with these wonderful young people here. I'm going to let them explain it. So we came up with the name The Seeds of Change because we would like to make a change, but like we start little and then we go big. So it's basically Seeds of Change. When you look at Southwest, there's a lot of trash and stuff. So that really got our attention. Like, how about we 
try to clean it up more and like show people different ways on how you can reuse your trash instead of throwing it out. But you don't have is it like a square we or a circle were, to go in the middle? Yeah, we're supposed to find a square or a circle to go in the middle. I was thinking about doing and that. How about you just do like, this little circle? That's one of my favorite things about Bartram, is that I've never seen a school have such a tight-knit community wrapped around it. That, you know, we have a really rich alumni and community members who come and who are really invested. I mean, it's the only comprehensive high school in Southwest Philadelphia. So it not thriving, you know, would be to the detriment of the whole community. And I think people understand that. And so they come back and they give input and they share and they try to build and figure out what we can do to make Bartram better. And that's, that's by far one of my favorite things about the school. I would say like a walkthrough of how the students get to school and what they have to go through, you know, coming yeah. into school. <laughs> Okay, and then we get to Bartram. Maya yeah. said, if we end this part with like the reputation question, mm -hmm. this question is kind of like I, we can almost structure it the way we had that conversation, right? Like the why does Bartram have this reputation? And like some people say it might be the students, but like that leaves some stuff out of the picture that's really important to understand. Like, You're, we're fighting this argument all the time and this perception. And it's not just Bartram, as you said, it's South Philly, it's Gratz, it's this. Yes, and, and again, we're all trying to, to win over hearts and minds that says we need e equitable funding. I never really like knew how much this school like naturally had, but we do a lot of fundraisers, so we do raise some money. I just feel like we could use some more money because we need more books and we need better desks because these desks is horrible. I think it's kind of jacked up, for real, because it's a lot of schools with with textbooks that's way like that's back in like 1970 or 1980 or something like that, and they all falling apart. They old. It's just, it's hard to focus seeing like the school that you love falling apart. And it's, and it's like, you, you see that it's falling apart and you see that the teachers are starting to get tired and, you know, like starting to get, you know, fed up. Like it's, like it's hard to see teachers that you love starting to get tired and fall apart and like you can't focus on, you know, the stuff that's important. Our kids are out there, they're doing what they can do under crazy situations. And they're the kids that we keep fighting for. The students and the staff struggle and make things work with what we have. I, I've, I've heard that blame game a lot. You know, I think that we're all guilty of it. I'll start by saying that. I think the educators are guilty of blaming the families and, you know, uh, for not investing enough time in their children at home. I think families are guilty of blaming classroom teachers for not taking the time out and giving, equipping, equipping the students with enough tools for them to be successful. You know, as educators, we do it. We blame the district. You know, there's not enough funds. If they gave us more money, we'd be able to do all of this. And they say, if you did more work, we could give you more money. People aren't ready to own their piece. Like, I'm gonna own my piece. I'm gonna own my piece, my responsibility for these kids while I'm here every day. You know, if like all these people coming together, if they don't take it and say, this is what I need to do to make this better, it won't get better and they won't change because we're literally doing the same thing, expecting a different result. This film could make it better. Um, this film could go left or it could go right. So like, certain people could pay attention, certain people won't pay attention to it. But we should still do it because like, certain like, basically, 
all you need for real for real is one person that will pass it on. So once one person watched the film, film and they really get to them, that will pass it on. And then hopefully this film really be like important and it goes big. Instead of saying bad stuff about Bartram, hopefully the film changed people's mindsets about it. Okay. Come on, bring it. Hey. 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 Hey.